Arctic P12 or Arctic F12? Which one is better at cooling? Which one is quieter? In what scenario should you choose which one? Today we're gonna have a closer look at Arctic's F12 fans and finally settle which one is the better fan. Today's video is sponsored by Laser3D. Are you bored by today's PC case market cause everything just looks the same? Well, fear no more, your salvation is here. Now you can finally stop buying those boring off-the-shelf cases, fire up Laser 3D's configurator and design exactly the case that you truly deserve. Do you want an extremely small PC? Check. Vented side panels for the GPU? Check. Vented top fan? Check. Hell, let's put vents everywhere. Laser 3D's newest LZX8 case is built for the real small 4-factor enthusiast. With only 8.6 liters, it can easily fit onto your desk or even your speaker and yet it is still able to fit in a whole gaming PC, including some of those new fancy RTX 3000 cards. Check out Laser 3D's LZX8 in its configurator by clicking on the links below. So this is a Arctic F12 PPM PSC and just like the P12s, there are a number of versions of this fan. A standard 3-pin, a silent with reduced fan speed, a PVM version, a temperature controlled version, a PVM PST, so PVM with a daisy chain plug at the end, and a PVM PSTCO version, so PVM with daisy chain and built for constant operations. <sighs> What we have here today are the PVM PST models, which means that I can control them via a PVM header while being able to pass through the same signal to the next fan and so on and so forth. Out of the box, the F12s are coming in a very similar packaging, containing just some stats while including the usual mounting screws and the iconic iPhone-shaped manual QR code. In theory, a P12 is meant for occasions where you need high static pressure, like a radiator, heatsink or hard to get through filters, while a F12 is meant just for airflow and nothing else. Comparing both fans side to side, we can already see how this is implemented. On the P12 we have 5 very long and severely bent wings, perfect to push the air as hard as possible. On the F12 however, we have 9 way shorter and less bent wings, which are just pushing as much air as possible. If we look at the specs, it gets a bit complicated. The F12s are able to push about 53 CFM at 1 mm of H2O while spinning at 1350 RPM, whereas the P12s can push 56.3 CFM at 2.2 mm of water and 1800 RPM. Now, if you blindly read those numbers, you might just go better, 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 but it's not that easy. If we perform some quick math, we'll see that the P12 is able to push 0.031 CFM per rotation, while the F12 can push 0.039 and this is the part where these are airflow focused fans because both fans are pushing almost the same amount of air but the F12s are just way more efficient at it. That being said, in the end it's the absolute performance that counts. So we did multiple benchmarks to see if and at what point an F12 may be better suited than a P12. First up would be our usual benchmark inside of the Acer Hive case with two F12s in the front and one in the back as exhaust and a Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim without any fans in order to maximize the fan benefit. In here the F12 spinning at 100% fan speed were able to keep the 3600X at 66 degrees C, perfectly fitting into our expectations at 100% a bit less at lower static pressure, which makes sense. At 50% fan speed, this changed as the F12s were able to keep the 3600X at 80 degrees C, 3 degree lower than a P12. How is this possible? Well, I'm not 100% sure. My best guess is that the amount of air in relation to the fan speed is not like a flat line, but, but more like a curve letting the F12's efficiency kick in and just allow it to push more air than a P12 at 50% fan speed. But I do not own the machinery to test this series, so we will just need to take the numbers as they are. All of that being said, the low fan speed and high efficiency of the P12s point to one thing. A F12 is only meant to provide the cold air, whereas a P12 is in theory, very capable of cooling stuff. But this also means that the benchmark we just did is highly biased towards a P12. So we changed it up. We reinstalled the fan on top of the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim and let it spin at 20% fan speed. 
So now the high static pressure of a P12 is not that much of a benefit anymore because the CPU fan now handles the heatsink and we are just looking at how much air the case fans are able to provide. While slowly reducing the fan speed, the P12 started off at 59 degrees C and ended up at 81 degrees C. As expected, the F12s started off a bit higher at 63 degrees, but as we reduced the fan speed, their efficiency started to catch up until they overtook the P12s at 30% fan speed. At this point, we can see that at really low fan speeds, the F12s do a better job at providing and circulating the air inside of our case. But at every step of the way, we also measured the noise each of the fans created, and that just mixed everything up. If we look at the CPU temperature in regards to the created noise, the F12s are behind at every step of the way until they take the lead at a point where, where I was unable to accurately measure or hear the difference between them. This creates three scenarios. The first one would be, I do not want my PC to be louder than 39 dB. Well, the P12s do a better job at it. The second one would be just blast, where the P12s are winning again. And the last one would be, I do not want to hear my fans at all, so like this case, and everything in that range, the, the F12 would dominate most of the range, but the best spots are still taken by the P12s. And if you want to hear it for yourself, take a listen. Okay, so don't get me wrong, I am not saying that the F12s are bad fans, they are still a very good bang for the buck. But my issue is that if you look at performance and noise, there is just no reason to go with an F12 instead of a P12. It's unfortunate, but in the end Arctic made their pure case fan completely obsolete with their own all-rounder fan. <laughs> And the price doesn't make it any better, because depending on where you look, the fans are going for somewhat between 5 and 10 bucks. But both of them, the F12 and P12, usually cost plus minus the same, plus minus one euro. So in the end, there is just no argument going for an F12, but a lot of arguments going for the P12. And I have not even mentioned the fact that the reduced static pressure of these may become an issue in some cases. But okay, so this was my take on Arctic's F12 PVM PFC. At this point, I would like to thank Arctic for sending us over these fans. And you may want to subscribe to not miss the next video, because Arctic also sent over their F14 fans. And you might think that the results will be the same, but wrong. I repeated my benchmark for hours until I realized why an F14 compared to a P14 is not the same as an F12 compared to a P12. But you will see them in the review. Okay, thank you for watching. I left all the manufacturer and affiliate links down in the description below. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.